Right, so I'm back and this time I'm actually gonna be doing another overview or review based on what you know Mexico did for the last World Cup. I mean, I know we did terribly, we didn't even make it out of the group, but that's besides the point. Let's get on with what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be talking about before, during, and after the World Cup, my opinions about it, my thought process about it. So yeah, let's get on with the first part before the World Cup, starting with the roster. So obviously I made my own roster before the actual Mexican roster did come out because of course Tata Martino, the Mexican, the Argentinian former uh, national Mexican national team manager selected his 26, I selected my 26. There were a few variations, a few differences. And yeah, so let's get on to the goalkeeper, shall we? The goalkeepers, Memo Choa, I'm happy with that selection. Definitely deserved to go and he proved to be a valid asset. But the fact that he didn't select Carlos Acevedo, I, I, I don't really understand. I would have put him over Alfredo Talavera. Just, I mean, as I put before in my other video, link is down in the description, but it's just Talavera is not going to be there for our next World Cup. Ochoa is not going to be for our next World Cup and neither is Gota. I think Acevedo would have been the perfect goalkeeper to take as a backup to Memo Ochoa so he can gain experience at the World Cup because he will most likely be the starter if he keeps up his good form onto the next World Cup. As for defenders, I wasn't too disappointed in this one. I would have put a few other more youngsters, but I wasn't too disappointed with these defense because to be fair, Mexico doesn't have the strongest of defensive lines. But then again, Mexico is not a defensive team. We're more an offensive team. So yeah, that's why I think it was okay, but still um, taking Nestor Araujo, Moreno, uh, I don't know. Some of these weren't the greatest. Just maybe playing them a little more, the youngsters a little more, like Gerardo Artiaga would have been great, but it is what it is. That's just my opinion. Now for midfielders. There's some midfielders that I'm very happy that went, some midfielders that I'm okay with, and some midfielders that I'm just like, why? Why Why did you take them? Orbelin Pineda, first off, I, I was half and half, but after his performance for Mexico at the World Cup, I was actually quite happy that he was taken. Eric Gutierrez did not have a good World Cup, neither did Edson Alvarez, but that's besides the point. They didn't get much playing time, at least not as much playing time as I would have expected. But Romo, taking Luis Romo, that that was a very big confusion for me. But I mean, I wasn't the, the manager. And Uriel Antuna, he's a good player, but it's just, it wasn't... He's not that good of a player to take to a World Cup and still taking Andres Guardado and Neto Herrera. If we're gonna take experience, why are we taking both of them? We just need one of them and Andres Guardado ended up getting injured. I'm sorry, but Andres Guardado, I love him and I love Hector Herrera, but they're just a little too old for me. But it is what it is, onto the forwards. So last but not least, we took three strikers. Two of them have not scored consistently for the past few years. Raul Jimenez has not been the same since his head injury and Rogelio Funes Mori, oh, I cannot be more angry at him. I I just don't like him. I don't like him for the national team. I don't know why we took, we didn't take him and why didn't we take Chicharito? Why didn't we take Santiago Jimenez? Why didn't we take Diego Linus? Uh, it's just three different players that for me definitely deserve to go yet didn't, that weren't taken. Chicharito could have been his last World Cup and now he probably won't step on a World Cup stage ever again. Santiago Jimenez, he would have got the experience so he could be even better in this 2026 World Cup where we're hosting it. Last but not least, Diego Lainez, same thing as Santiago Jimenez. He's, he would have become a little more experienced. He would get the experience at a World Cup and maybe he could have proven himself to be an even better player than we already think he is and yet he was not taken. But it is what it is. Roster selection was what it was. I'm very unhappy with it. And yeah, I don't voice my opinions about the actual roster in my in my roster video, but I do mention who I would have taken. So yeah. Anyways, on to what happened at the World Cup. First things first, the first ever game at this 2022 World Cup was against Poland. And honestly, we were the better team. We played better, we had more shots, we had more shots on target, we had more possession. And yet, we came out with a no no draw. How? Honestly, because of a Memo Ochoa masterclass. He saved the penalty up against Robert Lewandowski, arguably one of the best strikers in the world. And yeah, we were lucky to get away with a draw. 
for this game. How are we saying that we had a better t better game than Poland, yet still say that we had the, that we were lucky to get a draw against in this game? Oh, it's simple because our chances weren't that good. We we weren't able to create the good chances. I will admit that we had a good lineup of four three three. We had two wingers, Alexis Vega and. Chucky Lozano and Henry Martin down the middle. I like that. That's exactly what we should have gone for. Henry Martin just couldn't score. Neither did Alexis Vega and Irving Lozano was... Uh, he was okay at best. But of course, Memo Trout was able to save us. And it's okay. It was one point. So it's fine. So let's just move on to the next game. It is Argentina. But maybe we can get a, a, a scrappy draw up against them. Or maybe, you know what, just prove that we can play somewhat well. And then hope for a good draw up, or a good win up against Saudi Arabia. Let's see what happened up against Argentina, shall we? So, up against Argentina, pretty boring game for the first half. And, I mean, if we look at all the stats, Argentina had better stats. They had five goal, uh, five shots, two shots on target, and yes, they scored from two shots on target. They, they beat us 2-0. But I will say this, and I will stick to this. Mexico had the better first half and the better quarter, or the best... Third quarter. We were better for the first like 65 minutes up against Argentina. We weren't the great. We weren't great, but we were better than Argentina. We played better than them. We had a few better chances, and yet, how did we lose this game? Because we just <sighs> the chances that we created, they were better than Argentina's. But that's just because Argentina weren't that good. Argentina were not playing that well, and yet somehow we were unable to take advantage of this and get the points that we needed. We lost 2-0 thanks to a Messi super goal and an Enzo Fernandez super goal. Both of them showed their class and they were able to defeat Mexico. But it is what it is. I still think Mexico played better than Argentina, but that their standards weren't that great. But it's okay. We have one point. Maybe we can get a result up against Saudi Arabia. Let's see what we did. So, up against Saudi Arabia, the table looked absolutely horrid for us. We were in fourth place, one point, and every other team had at least one once. That means that we had to win by at least three or four goals, depending on what happened in the other game, which is Argentina versus Poland. If Argentina were able to get a result up against Poland, then, and not only that, by a, by a few goal margin, which they did, they got a 2-0 um, goal margin, or the 2-0 win, which was a two-goal margin, that would help us progress with Argentina, which looked very likely because Poland did not seem like the type to beat Argentina at the time. At least that's for my opinion. Of course, we could have passed if Poland were to beat Argentina, but that didn't seem likely, at least not for me. But anyways, Argentina were able to get a 2-0 victory. All we had to do was get a 3-0 victory, and we were golden. And we were doing fantastically. Our stats for the game were 26 shots. We had 11 on target, but Saudi Arabia also had quite a few shots with 10 shots and two on target. We had scored twice, and then we scored two other goals. Both of them were offside, but we did score one of the goals of the tournament, which was Luis Chavez, the free kick master. That's just, what a free kick by Luis Chavez. And then we had another free kick, and Chucky Lozano decides to take it. Why? Why? I'm sorry, Chucky Lozano, I love you. I love you so much. You scored a great goal up against Germany, but why? 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 Luis Chavez had scored a banger from like 35 yards out, if not farther, and yet... We give it to Chuck Lozano. Why? I'm sorry, but just why? Anyways, we were 2-0 up. We knew that we had to score more goals. We, we were so close. We kept hitting. We kept going. We kept going. We kept pushing forward. And then in the 93rd minute, what happened? Uh, yeah, Saudi Arabia scored. And like that, our hopes went down. And we played our last game of the World Cup 2022 in Qatar. So we end off our campaign in the World Cup of 2022 at the group stage we played three games only scored twice and conceded three times yay anyways on to the aftermath of the world cup so now the aftermath so we crashed out of the world cup at the group stage it was terrible for mexico and yeah Oh, but we lost to the eventual winners. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that from any Mexican or any fan of any sort. We lost because of ourselves. Okay, yes, we lost to Argentina, who were, I mean, they deservedly won the World Cup entirely. But that's not what, I'm not going to cling to that as a hope for us. No, 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 no. Mexico were absolutely 
just not good enough. We weren't able to score. We defended somewhat okay, but our midfield was lacking, our attacking was lacking, and honestly, we just need a revamp of this whole entire team. We need a new manager. Luckily, Tata Martino is out of here. I don't know who's going to be the new manager, but I just hope he's better than Tata. And we do definitely need a Mexican manager because he will understand us and he will understand the, you know, the team. Also, get Rogelio Funes Mori out of my team right now. I'm sorry. Just get him out of the team. I don't want to see him wear another Mexico jersey. I'm sorry. He just, no, get him out. I want Santiago Jimenez back in there. Chicharito, if he can play another World Cup, if he's still banging goals in the MLS, I don't care. If he's scoring over 15 goals in the MLS, I want him to go because he can score. He puts the ball in the net. That's what I want. But anyways, anyways, the aftermath. I did hear a comment about this one former Mar Mexican player, or I'm not sure if he played internationally, but this Mexican player who said, maybe we should take a break from the World Cup, as in skip out on the next World Cup. No, 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 no. If we skip out on the next World Cup, 2026, which I will remind you is in the US, Canada and Mexico, which arguably, I mean, there's rumors that Mexico might not be a host anymore, that it will just be USA and Canada. Even if it's not true, we, we cannot miss this World Cup. We cannot miss any World Cup as a, as a nation, okay? We have gone to every World Cup for the past, I don't even know how many, but it, it's quite a few, okay? And if we miss out on, on the next World Cup, that would mean that the youngsters of now, who will be four years older, which will be hitting around their prime, or should be hitting around their prime, or getting to that age, they, sh they will miss out on that experience of going to a World Cup. So we desperately need these players to go to a World Cup, just like Santiago Jimenez and Diego Linus. They deserve to go to this World Cup. They needed it right here in this year. But since they didn't get it, now it's even more crucial that they go to this 2026 World Cup. I'm not expecting big things, but I do expect a lot of fan base or a lot of our fan base to actually help out and push us forward to, you know, at least the fourth game, you know, the route of 16 and maybe the curse gets us again. La maldición del, del quinto partido. I'll put the, you know, anyways, but yes, I would love to, for Mexico to win the World Cup and hopefully they can in my lifetime. But as it's as it's looking right now, I don't see it, especially with the Mexican FA just doing absolutely just garbage and then the Mexican league not letting youngsters go out to Europe or to other leagues just to try themselves out or they're letting them out either too early or too late like Alexis Vega he's 25 years old some people may think that oh he's like 22 that's a perfect age for him to you know explore in Europe no he's about 25 and yes he's getting a lot of attention now because of the World Cup but I mean will he be ready maybe he will be maybe he won't be hopefully he hits it well and hopefully he's ready for the next World Cup I, I am so excited for the next one, but I hope that Mexico is ready. I'm not expecting us to win this, this whole thing, but hopefully we can do something. I want to get out of the group next, next World Cup. We have to. We have to as a nation. And yeah, either way, I'm always rooting for Mexico. They are my number one nation, of course. I did, of course, I did root for Argentina, but Mexico is always my home and it'll always be my nation. Viva Mexico. Laters.